Chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Tonko, for four minutes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, I want to follow up on a question asked by Mr. McNerney, where he talked about um, visiting websites and um, the fact that Facebook uh, can track you. And um, as you visit those websites, you can have that deleted. I'm uh, informed that there's not a way to do that, or are you telling us that you're uh, announcing uh, a new policy? Congressman, my understanding is that if there's, if we have information from you visiting other places, then you have a way of getting access to that and deleting it and making sure that we don't store it anymore. In the specific question that the, the other congressman asked, I think it's possible that we just didn't have the information that he was asking about in the first place, and that's why it wasn't there. Well, 3 billion user accounts were breached at Yahoo in 2013, 145 million at eBay in 2014, 143 million at Equifax in 2017, 78 million at Anthem in 2015, 76 million at J.P. Morgan Chase in 2014. The list goes on and on. The security of all that private data is gone, likely sold many times over to the highest bidder on the dark web. We live in an information age. Data breaches and privacy hacks are not a question of if, they are a question of when. But the case with Facebook is slightly different. The 87 million accounts extracted by Cambridge Analytica are just the beginning, with likely dozens of other third parties that have accessed this information. As far as we know, the dam is still broken. As you have noted, Mr. Zuckerberg, Facebook's business model is based on capitalizing on the private personal information of your users. Data security should be a central pillar of this model. And with your latest vast breach of privacy and the widespread political manipulation that followed it, the question this committee must ask itself is what role the federal government should play in protecting the American people and the democratic institutions that your platform and others like it have put at risk. In this case, you gave permission to mine the data of some 87 million users based on the deceptive consent, a consent of just a fraction of that number. When they found out I was going to be speaking with you today, my constituents asked me to share some of their concerns in person. How can they protect themselves on your platform? Why should they trust you again with their likes, their loves, their lives? Users trusted Facebook to prioritize user privacy and data security, and that trust has been shattered. I'm encouraged that Facebook is committed to making changes, but I am indeed wary that you are only acting now out of concern for your brand and only making changes that should have been made a long time ago. We have described this as an arms race, but every time we saw what precautions you have, or in most cases have not taken, your company is caught unprepared and ready to issue another apology. I'm left wondering again why Congress should trust you again. We'll be watching you closely to ensure that Facebook follows through on these commitments. Many of my constituents have asked about your business model, where users are the product. Mary of Half Moon in my district called it infuriating, infuriating. Andy of Schenectady, New York asked, why doesn't Facebook pay its users for their incredibly valuable data? Facebook claims that users rightly own and control their data, yet their data keeps being exposed on your platform and these breaches cause more and more harm each time. You have said that Facebook was built to empower its users. Instead, users are having their information abused with absolutely no recourse. In light of this harm, what liability should Facebook have? When users' data is mishandled, who is responsible and what recourse do users have? Do you bear that liability? Congressman, I think we're responsible for protecting people's information for sure. But one thing that you said that I, that I want to provide some clarity on. Do you on, bear the liability? Well, you said earlier, you referenced that you thought that we were only taking action um, after this came to light. Actually, we made significant changes to the platform in 2014 that would have made this incident with Cambridge Analytica impossible to happen well, again today. It, um, I wish we'd made those changes a couple of years earlier because uh, this poll app uh, got people to use it back in 2013 and 2014, and if we had made the changes a couple of years earlier, then uh, we would have. Then we would. Gentlemen's have, time I appreciate has expired. This, Chair, recognize. Mr. Chairman, if I might ask that um, other questions that my constituents have be entered uh, sure. by unanimous consent without, without objection. Of course, that's, that goes for all.